Are global property bubbles beginning to burst? As Dublin house prices fall 2.5% in the quarter and increasing Brexit risks and global risks begin to manifest, today we're going to consider the real risk that the property bubbles in many leading international cities around the world is beginning to unravel. I'm Marco Byrne, Research Director of Goldcore, and yeah, it's a quite an important update. It's something we've considered for a long period of time, um, because not just us, but The Economist magazine, UBS Wealth, uh, a lot of leading experts internationally uh, have been warning about the huge overvaluation we've seen, and indeed bubbles that we see in many cities internationally. And, and now it's beginning to happen that uh, what we've long suspected will happen, prices are beginning to fall. Uh, even though we are told that prices would not fall because these cities are unique with unique economic fundamentals, unique demographics. And as always, this time is different. Those famous four words that we always see uh, to justify these bubbles. So I just want to go through a few articles that uh, uh, just to sort of uh, uh, help you understand why we view this. And basically, as I said, uh, Dublin, uh, only a few short months ago, people told us that Prices in Dublin were stable and were going to continue to rise because of the demographics and because of the fundamentals and the usual justifications that you see for, for overvaluation in property markets. And just to be clear, Dublin is not a classic uh, property bubble by any means because Dublin uh, had a massive crash, as we know, and, uh, and it's, it's recovered. It, it's actually in parts of the Dublin market are back at all-time record highs they were. So parts of the Dublin uh, property market look like bubbles, but there is uh, actually value to be had in outer suburbs and at the lower end of the marketplace. So Dublin is a little bit different uh, compared to some other, other markets we'll look at. But uh, the bottom line is we believe that falling property prices uh, around the world, including in our biggest trading partner in London, will have a real impact uh, on, on the Dublin property market in time and indeed on the Irish economy as the risks from Brexit begin to manifest and impact the UK economy, London economy. And obviously, you know, we, we have that we're all massively uh, interrelated and, and, and huge trading partner uh, uh, that the UK is with Ireland. So we can see here housing prices fall 2.5% in Dublin. That's just in the last quarter. Uh, RTE reporting home asking prices fall in third quarter. Um, and yeah, you can see, see it here. And this is just last week. Uh, the Irish Times reports it's slightly different. Dublin property price growth has slowed. Uh, myhome.ie says so. It's a myhome.ie report. Irish Times owns my, myhome.ie and generates a huge, huge amount of revenues from it. It's interesting uh, that the headline is not talking about prices falling, which they actually did. It's talking about price growth slowed. But oh, so it's over the year or two years, price growth has slowed. But uh, I think that the more important, the breaking news is actually the fact that prices have fallen. But there can be a degree of spin with these things and uh, and the media tends to, to, to hype these things on the way up and then downplay the risks. So basically, as I said, yeah, the property bubbles around the world, uh, UBS have been great at, at highlighting this in recent years. And they've done some wonderful reports that have barely been picked up in much of the mainstream media, but they're beginning to get picked up. Um, and the UBS report that's well worth reading, if you want to get a, a better understanding of this, is the UBS Global Real Estate Bubble Index. Um, and it's really, really fascinating read for any anyone who's interested in, in investments, uh, and particularly, obviously, in, in terms of property investment. And they have basically said that there are property bubbles uh, uh, around the world. It's changed last year compared to this year. I think la last year they're saying uh, London and Sydney were particularly vulnerable, but we have seen sharp price falls uh, in both London and Sydney. And I'll come to Sydney in, in, in a little bit because Australia seems to be the epicenter of the, uh, the, the falling property prices and, and the start of this, uh, this everything bubble, including everything uh, uh, property bubble in leading cities beginning to unravel. So what UBS are now saying in their latest report is that uh, the Bubble risk appears greatest in Hong Kong, Munich, Toronto, Vancouver, London, and Amsterdam. So you can see it here. Uh, and then they warn of overvaluations or major imbalances in Stockholm, Paris, San Francisco, Frankfurt, and Sydney. So, yeah, 
prices are have begun falling in some of these cities um and and there's been massive uh, uh speculation in these markets all based on zero percent interest rates um and and basically people are are, are just just no, no, not not buying uh property as they should be bought for for the yield they're buying uh, almost as a just a speculative thing about making uh speculative returns and sometimes they're using it just, you know very wealthy people are using it as a, a form of safety deposit box because they're worried about their own economies and they buy a property in london or in toronto or singapore and it's almost like this this safe haven effect but the, the, the sentiment is beginning to to change and, and and we think that's a key thing and we're going to come back to that now in a second so the affordability is just you know people average people not even just average people people on good salaries professional people husband and wives together find it very hard to buy properties um, modest properties in most of these cities you know because they have become so speculative um, and the ubs report highlights that even a small apartment in most world cities it exceeds the budgets of most professional people uh, and it's well beyond the reach of, of people are on the average uh, income paid in in uh, professional services and highly skilled services uh, and the economist has highlighted this as well and the economist has, has basically done research showing the overvaluation of these cities relative to people's incomes in, in these various cities so uh, and that includes Dublin and they've said that Dublin is uh, even Dublin is 25% overvalued and and, and and, and, and anybody who lives in Dublin can tell you that the price has gone uh, crazy again, uh, particularly at the mid to top end of the marketplace. Uh, and rents are at all time record highs again, back at the, the highs we were seeing in 2007. And as I said, prices are back near there in, in many, many of the, the, the nicer suburbs, not just the top end of the market, but the, the, the mid and mid to, to top end of the marketplace as well, you know. And that's all fine while the economy is humming and everything is going uh, absolutely hunky dory. But as we know, yeah, it's not all about demographics. The supply demand is, is obviously a, a very important factor, but it's not the only factor. Uh, uh, and, and sentiment is a hugely important factor in, in all markets, and particularly, I think, in property markets. So, yeah, the, the UBS report, it's, 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 it's a must, must read. Uh, it's accessible just online. Just uh, Google it. Uh, uh, you'll find it, UBS Global Real Estate, Real Estate Bubble Index. Uh, it's beginning to get picked up in some of the media internationally, uh, and, and Bloomberg picked up it there. And you can see here just the scale of, of, of the bubble risk uh, uh, the UBS are highlighting there in terms of Hong Kong, Munich, Toronto, Vancouver, Amsterdam, and of course, London. And London has seen uh, quite serious sharp falls in, in many of the suburbs of London already. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it, it's all, as we know, all these markets are about confidence and uh, and sentiment, and and that's beginning to change, particularly uh, in the UK and Ireland because of of Brexit and the huge risks that this creates both to the UK economy and indeed the Irish economy, and. Uh, just uh, uh, in, in recent days, uh, Irish consumer confidence has fallen very, very sharply. Uh, and that is, uh, it's been attributed to two concerns about Brexit and just a huge uncertainty. People don't know uh, what, what's going to happen, basically. You know, businesses don't know. And it's very hard to plan because there's so many variables and so many potential eventualities. Uh, and also the cost of bills, particularly rent uh, and housing, uh, have gone through the roof, you know, and, and people are beginning to struggle. And obviously that's going to impact uh, sentiment. And uh, and I think in time, that, that will feed into uh, uh, the, the property market here. Uh, as I said, the economist says Dublin house prices are 25% overvalued. I, I think parts of, of, of Dublin are seeing much higher uh, overall valuations than that. But the economist there is looking at the average the average income to the average house price. But uh, yeah, in, in, in a lot of the, uh, you know, the, as I said, the middle to upper end, uh, there, there is much more significant overvaluation than that. It's become highly, highly speculative, you know. And there is this sentiment that, you have to get in the ladder. If you don't buy now, you're going to miss the boat. Your price is going to go up forever. And when you get that sort of sentiment um, and a rational exuberance, as Alan Greenspan called it, it tends to signal the top. And uh, it's amazing just the, the level of, uh, I, I suppose, uh, just group psychology again all the experts are unanimous that there's no bubble there's nothing to fear we had the crisis 10 years ago but no, you know there's no comparison everything has changed since then and there's little or no risk today and and everybody from the leading experts uh, in the banks and the stockbrokers uh, and economists uh, most of them are singing from the same hymn sheet again as they were in 2007 and then that per percolates down to the man on the street uh, the much benign taxi driver 
and, and some people use that as a, a contrary indicator when they, all the taxi drivers, uh, uh, he's typical, I suppose, of the man in the street. And when they believe that you can't go wrong with property and property price is always going to go up because of the demographics, that tends to mean you, you're close to the top, if not at the top. And I was in a taxi only last week with a taxi driver and he told me the demographics is just not enough supply and the prices are always going to go up. And he told me it was because the Brazilians, the Brazilians are coming to Dublin. There's hundreds and thousands of Brazilians coming to Dublin and they're going to push up the price of property. As I said to me, if, if we get a global financial crisis again, the economy slow down, and then the Brazil and then the jobs aren't in Ireland. The Brazilians will not come to Ireland to go to other countries. So the same thing was said in 2007 by taxi drivers to me about 300,000 Polish people and 200,000 Estonians, Lithuanians, Latvians are going to come to Dublin, and this is going to push up our property prices. And, and obviously that never came to pass because both the global uh, financial crisis, but also uh, just the Irish prices have become so unsustainable, so overvalued, and all it took was some global event to prick the bubble that was Irish property at the time. So we believe the same thing is going to happen again. It's beginning to happen as we said. Uh, I think Australia is the uh, canary in the coal mine. Um, uh, canary in the, in, in the global property market and Australian house prices. This is just overnight now. Associated Press, Australian house prices have come down 2.7%. Um, dragged down by 2.7% in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, and I, I think it's amazing when you read the press in, in uh, Australia 12 months ago, uh, a similar narrative, the prices were sustainable, prices were going to go higher, or they may level out, but we're not going to get price falls. And lo and behold, we see price falls. And uh, they had their own narrative for this in, in terms of the Chinese commodity boom, uh, supply demand, the strength of the Australian economy, and, and all that's beginning to change, you know, because it's dependent, obviously, on on, on group psychology, you know, and uh, and, and it, it reminds me of the importance of the of Minsky, Hyman Minsky, and, and his theory of the uh, financial instability hypothesis. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's well worth reading about it. But he, he basically is that. Now, everything is cyclical and ultimately stability breeds instability and then you get a period of instability and then you get stability and uh, he basically, uh, as, as Google tells us here, uh, everything feels great when the economy is healthy, when unemployment is low, the economy is growing, debt is easy to acquire and the stock market is doing well and obviously we've seen all that in abundance in recent months in this everything bubble that we have uh, and that we've spoken about on, on numerous occasions. So we think things are beginning to change, the psychology is beginning to change and it's just important to be aware of it um, and, and just yeah, diversify. Gold will come into its own as a hedge against falling property prices and we think when property prices fall it, it has a much uh, uh, bigger impact on the economy because there's so much uh, employment uh, and ec economic growth uh, is is dependent uh, and comes from uh, from property you know and property development and building and, and all the associated uh, employment and, and, and growth that comes from that in, in terms of the, the economy. So it, it really is a leading economic indicator and uh and, and we think it's something to, to to just be aware of uh and yeah again diversify if you if you're overweight property then it might be time to reduce allocations of property uh and uh, and if you're thinking about buying a property obviously it depends on your own individual circumstances and uh, uh and it's your family home then potentially you do it but uh, i think in these big cities where, where there are uh, bubbles i think you need to be very wary indeed and uh yeah ultimately when property prices fall it will most likely these banks that have uh, massively overlent again into many of these property marketplaces are going to be uh, exposed and it potentially creates a, a wider financial crisis uh, and another global financial crisis and we think that is quite likely given the degree of, of debt that is still in the banks and that's never been resolved from the last financial crisis uh, and a, a massive outstanding issue that we have failed to address so yeah i mean that that's it in a nutshell um yeah Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, it, it, you know, it it it, it doesn't uh, make you popular, but we think it's important to just look at the the hard, cold economic facts of the matter and uh, and to prepare accordingly, and uh, you know, just uh, hope for the best, but be prepared for more uh, or less benign scenario, should I say? So, thanks for your time. Uh, you'll find us on all the, the usual uh, channels in terms of social media. Uh, please uh, follow us on YouTube and subscribe to our market updates on goldcore.com. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.